So today it's almost a continuation of what we covered last week, um, except now we're actually going to create the database that we were the databases we were looking at. So we looked at these simple examples of some tables, and what we're going to do today is actually create this table in the computer. Because obviously, so we've got a table here, but no one actually goes and manually creates the table in Google Slides or Excel or whatever. That's not how databases work. There's actually another programming language called SQL or Structured Query Language that we use to create these databases and work with them. So you guys will be programming along with me quite a lot today. Uh, if you could have like a device available, that would be good. Um, I see Connor's here, welcome. Um, so we're gonna be using this site here. Um, hopefully you guys have like a device that you'll be able to program on. You don't have to be in the lecture on it, um, but just like you don't have to be in Zoom on it. Maybe if it's another device like a laptop or a desktop, something that you can program on comfortably. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, which uh, I think a lot of you will be watching on YouTube because there's very few people here and a lot of them were also late. But um, I'll, put, I'll put the URL in the description of the YouTube video. It is dbfiddle.com. So I just posted it in the chat now as well, guys. So may you give me a minute? Yeah, sure, come in. Um, so dbfiddle.com. Um, it's just, it looks like this and we'll be programming in this. Um, I mean, I'm not going to start immediately anyway, Connor. So you have time to just visit the site. Um, but we won't start programming immediately. I have to introduce things a little. Um, but yeah, so we'll be using dbfiddle.com. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, check it out in the description. And do follow along while I'm going through it. Uh, I sense it's earlier in the chat there, Saham. So, huh? uh, dbfiddle.com. So it's db-fiddle.com. Um, but yeah, so we'll be using that website to learn SQL. And I know it's weird. This is our second last lecture, actually. Next week will be our last. Um, it's weird that we're learning a new language in the last two lectures, but you'll see that SQL is quite easy, quite forgiving. Um, so yeah, uh, let me just discuss it a little bit. So SQL is just how we work with, with databases, how we query them and manage them. So I've been teaching myself, C that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. Nice. Yeah, and it's a fun way to learn as well. Oh, by the way, guys, when you're on DB Fiddle, make sure that in the top left, there's this drop down. Make sure that you select MySQL version 5.7. It's the version I'll be using. I think you won't have trouble if you use any of the others. Um, they should be the same, especially 8.0. Not, it's not going to break anything, but just to make sure, okay, so that we don't have any, any weird trouble. Okay. So SQL, um, in your books, for those that, of you that are interested in what the book has to say, um, where we'll sort of start working in today's lecture is page 155, page 155. So, hmm, yeah, there's, they have a lot of examples. It's pretty weird to me. So they, are, ooh, I'm making a game called Cube Man. It's an endless runner and you are a cube and I know how to do movement and camera. Oh, that's cool. That's actually quite advanced. Nice. Nice. Um, doing camera motion and stuff. Nice. Um, so in your book, they start with the select statements. So they jump immediately. Um, they jump immediately into um, how to work with the database before they've actually even created one. So we're instead going to start with how you create one. Okay, how you create one. Um, and you'll see that all SQL statements have this fairly similar structure, fairly simple structure, and they're almost like English, actually. So this is quite a nice language. It's, it's very similar to English. A lot of the statements just make sense to you. Um, so for example, over here, we have the SQL create statements, create. So you can see it says create table, then whatever you want the name of your table to be. And you specify each of the names of the columns and their types. Okay, so you can see that it's a fairly simple um, statement. It looks a lot like English. And so let's just jump in and start creating our database. Okay, so I'm going to head over to DB Fiddle now. Hopefully you guys have that open. So here it is. Um, what we're going to do is create this table over here. Okay, we're going to create the book table. I'm going to do everything I'm going to do everything in this table except genre ID, okay? 
We're not going to add genre ID yet. We'll discuss that in a, a, a little bit later. Um, so we're going to have how many columns, guys? How many columns are we going to have in our table? Just to make sure you guys are awake. Precisely. OK, good stuff. So we're going to come over here. We're going to say create table. OK, so that's the start of the statement. Um, you guys will notice, usually when I type in SQL statements, I'm going to type it in all caps. OK, you don't technically have to, but it's good practice. OK, it's good practice to put them in all caps. Um, so cool. What will be the next thing I type, guys? So I said create table. And next, we want to give it a name. So if I'm creating this table we have here, what am I going to type next? <laughs> I want it to be a little bit more specific than that, Connor. <laughs> call it table. Um, book table. Uh, so we'll just call it book, right? The name of our table over there, book. OK. So. We're going to say create table, and then I'm just going to type book. OK, create table book. Notice book wasn't in all caps, right? Because that's not a SQL command. That's the name that I'm giving it. OK, um, cool. So that's the start of our statement. That's going to go ahead and create table book. But as Connor mentioned, we have four columns in our, in our book table, OK? Um, and this is where we'll get to what you mentioned, Saham. So we're now going to go ahead <clears throat> and create the columns in our book table. Okay, notice I did also put a semicolon at the end, just like in C sharp, guys, just like in C sharp. So we're going to create each of the columns. We have to give each of the columns a name and a type. Okay, a name and a type. And you guys will notice that you're actually going to be quite familiar with the types already. Um, so uh, let's check this out a little bit. Uh, let's look at our table we're creating. So you guys see the ID column here. See the ID, see the values that it is holding. What type would that be in C sharp, guys? What type would that be in C sharp? Exactly, exactly. Ria, Connor, Saham, great stuff, guys. Yeah, it's an int. OK, so we're going to type the name of the column, which is ID. And it's type, which as all three of you guys have already pointed out, it's type is int. OK, it's type is int. Cool, so that's going to create a column called ID that holds a type of integer, OK, holds the type integer. Um, another part that I'm going to just introduce now to get it out the way, it's quite simple. In caps, I'm going to say not space null, not null, not null. And all that means is that this, when you create a new record, when you add a row to the table, you have to give it an ID, OK? It being not null means that every single record in your table has to have an ID. You can't leave ID blank, OK? So that's all not null means. So that's the first column, OK? Um, now we can look at the second column. So we're going to add title to the table. So what type would this be in C-sharp, guys? Title. You can see the values that title is holding. What type would that be? Float. Float is for des, ah, rear nice case string. That's, that's it. Saham also said string, cool. Okay, yeah, 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 exactly. Anonymous also says string. <coughs> We've got an anonymous now. Uh, great stuff, okay. Um, <laughs> Um, cool. So string. Now, there isn't a string inside SQL. So I'm sure you guys are going, oh, something new. OK, but it's still quite easy to understand what's going on. Um, you guys remember what a character is, right? A character. Um, a character is just, as in, in C sharp even, a character is just any single, any single character, right? To an at sign an exclamation point. All of these are just characters, OK? Ah, <laughs> something new. Yeah. Um, so all of these are just characters. Do you remember what I told you guys a string was? Um, we discussed it back, I think it was chapter three, when we were discussing data structures. What is a string, really? What is a string? 
Does anyone? It's a number of characters. I, I guess you could put it that it's it's an array of characters, right? It's an array of characters. Well, yeah, Connor, it is also a variable, true, but on a more basic level than that, it's an array of characters, right? Um, or a variable type, I guess is more. Um, but yeah, a, a list of characters, and that makes sense, right? Like the string, so we would call dog a string, but it's also just a list of characters, right? So D O G. Right, you can think of it in both ways. Okay, so cool. In in SQL, they take that that sort of metaphor, but or, or not metaphor. It is literally what it is in the computer. Um, but yeah, it's exactly what we've got there. So we're gonna say title, and then I'm gonna say okay, title. Oh, sorry, not all caps. Title like that. Okay, and we're gonna say all right, title is a list of characters, an array of characters rather. And how we say that is we say varchar, and then in brackets, the number of characters that we want it to have. So title is going to be an array of at most 255 characters. Okay, an array of 255 characters. That's what title is. Okay, cool. Um, so hopefully varchar255, that's basically like a string with 255 characters. Okay, cool. Next, we have author. Author. That's also going to be a um, array of characters. Okay, 255 characters. I'm going to make that the max. So the longest name of an author that we can have is 255. Okay. Um, and the last part of our database is going to be genre, or the last part of our table, rather is going to be genre and that's also going to be varchar255 okay cool so we're almost done that's a book table but do you guys remember if i ask you uh so is author meant to have two caps is it does it currently oh oh thanks for pointing that out connor no it wasn't um yeah just normal cool so that's the basic design of our table done but now i have another question for you guys okay so over here, okay, what is the primary key of the book table? Does anyone remember? What is the primary key of the book table? Okay, uh, very quick on the draw there, Saham. Yeah, ID is correct. Didn't even have time to have a sip of water. So yes, we have to tell the database that the primary key of book is ID, okay? And how we do that? We literally just say primary key, and then in brackets, we say the column that is the primary key. Remember that we can have composite keys as well. So if we wanted, we could say that both ID and title were the primary key, but we're making only ID the primary key. Because you guys remember for 2NF, second normal form, you don't want composite keys. You only want one thing in your primary key. Okay, so we have ID, that's our primary key. And all this means is that when we add something to the table, it's going to make sure that the ID is unique, okay? So we won't be allowed to add two books that have the ID one. It'll not allow that to happen. And I'll show you guys that when we start inserting some data, okay? Cool. So that creates our table, actually. Um, our table is created. Um, but you can see, number one, our table doesn't have anything in it yet. And um, it's, it's not doing anything. We're not doing anything with it. Okay, so that's the next step. We've created a table, we've designed a table over here, um, but now we actually wanna store some data in it and we actually wanna do something with it. Okay, so uh, let's continue on. So I've also put uh, basically everything we discussed, it's over here. So if you wanna study from the slides later on, you'll be able to, um, but that's just what we've discussed, nothing new on our text there. Okay, so on to the next statement. So we've now created a table but it's empty. So we want to add some data to the table, okay? And for that, we use the insert statement. So the create statement we use to create table. And now we say insert into whatever the name of the table we want to insert into is, and we give it the values that we want to insert. We could also specify which columns we want to insert into. Like if we aren't inserting into all of the columns, we can specify specific columns and then give the values we want those columns to be, okay? 
but I think it's best to just see some examples. So let's uh, jump in and check those out. Okay. So I'm going to go to um, a new line and we're going to use the insert statement to insert some books into the book table. Okay. So um, if any of you guys have any book suggestions, um, then we can insert those ones. So I'm going to say insert into book. Okay, insert into book, the great book. Um, I, okay, is that a book you wrote, Saham? <laughs> the Epic Tales of Connor by Connor. <laughs> um, cool, okay, we can do those. Okay, so I'm going to say insert into book. Okay, so insert into book. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that these are the values that we want to insert. So we're going to say insert into book values. And then we're just going to give it the list of values that we want the book to have. So we'll say book one is going to be, oh, sorry, book one, it's an integer, so not in quotes. Book one is going to be um, the great, I don't know why only book is capitalized in this title, the great book um, by Saham. <laughs> and it's going to be genre, what genre is this book, Saham? Fiction. Horror. Okay, it's horror. All right, horror it is. Okay, so the great book by Saham Horror. And now we're going to say insert into book. Okay, values. So book two is going to be the epic tales of Connor. The epic tales of Connor by Connor. And it's going to be a biography, I take it. Biographical or biography. Genre epicness. <laughs> I don't think that's a real genre. Okay, um, cool. So those are, that's two books. Um, so we're going to say insert into book values three. Okay, so book three, um, I'm going to just pick a current book. So I'll say, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, we'll say the unbearable lightness of being. Okay. Milan Kundera. And this is fiction. Okay, kind of. It's also like philosophical. Okay, cool. So I'm going to post all of this in the chat so that you guys can get it just in case we have some errors. Uh, let me just run it first, make sure that I didn't spell anything wrong. I didn't. Cool. So there we go. We've inserted three books into our table. You can see, guys, so I'm just going to point something out to you quickly. So you can see that we inserted into every single column, right? You can see we gave it a title, the author, and the genre in every case. Um, you can imagine that in some cases, maybe let's say we're inserting a book. Uh, we gave the ID as well. You can see one, two, three. One, two, three. See there, Sam. Um, so we... It is possible, so we have to give it an ID, right? We have to give books an ID, but it's possible that maybe we didn't want to specify an author, right? Like maybe there is no author of a particular book or something, no known author, for example. If you didn't want to insert an author, you would then have to specify which columns you are inserting into, because then it doesn't know, like, if you gave it horror over here, it doesn't know if horror is the author or if it's the genre, right? So you, have, you would have to specify, if you're skipping columns, you have to specify that I want to insert, for example, ID, title, and genre, and then you could skip out author over here, okay? You could then remove that and it would be fine, okay? But you only need to specify the columns when you are not using all of them, okay? Which makes sense, because if you use, if you give it four things, then it, and there's only four columns, it knows where everything needs to go. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could just make the author unknown as well, Saham, precisely. Um, and the other thing, yeah, yeah, precisely. You guys get the idea. Um, if you wanted to do things in a different order, like if you wanted to go title, if you wanted to specify the title, the author, the genre, and then the ID, for example, you could also specify which columns you're inserting into that way. Although certain versions of SQL won't support that. In general, just do it like this. Okay, cool. So that covers that. We've got our database, we've got our table, I'm go or we've got our table, we've got our, the values in the table. So I'll just send that to you guys. So there we go, I just posted all in the chat. 
um, just in case you guys uh, can maybe make a typo or something. Not the biggest of deals. Cool. And the last command that I just want to show you here, just to point it out, we're not going to use it really, but it's, I guess it's good to know. So you can say drop table and then the name of the table. So like drop table book, for example. And all that's going to do is it deletes the table from the database. Okay. So it just deletes the entire table. The word delete also means something. It also does something, but it doesn't delete tables. Okay. Delete, delete something else. We'll see it later. Um, but drop is how we delete tables. So drop table, table name is how we would delete or drop a table from the database. Okay, cool. So those are the beginning commands. Those are how we work with create and insert into tables. Um, but now let's go on and actually see how we can work with the table that we've just created. Okay, because uh, it's no fun just having a table that has a bunch of stuff in it. We want to be able to visualize it, work with it, search it, do all of that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, let's go on. So how we work with tables, we call it querying. Okay, so there's a database somewhere or, or a table somewhere. So like a database would just be a bunch of tables, right? Or, or even one table, right? So we have database and in it, we have any number of tables really. Um, but how we, how we work with the data in them is we query it. So we like ask questions. We ask questions. And the way we ask those questions is we use structured query language, right? SQL. So we created the table in SQL. We insert it into the table in SQL. We can delete tables with SQL. And we can also query, OK? Um, cool. So let's look, let's look at our first, this first query. So it's called select. Select, you give it whatever columns you're selecting from table name okay so select and you can see it just reads like english all of the all of the things just read like english right drop table book insert into book values and then the list of values create table table name all of the columns of the table primary key you can see they're all kind of like english select columns from table name so let's go try out select and you guys will see so on the left we defined we designed our database okay we designed our database on the left we're going to move to the right to actually query it, okay? Um, to actually ask questions of it. So that's what we're going to do here. So on the, you can see I'm editing things in the right now. And over here, I'm going to type select. Okay. Now, you give it the name of the columns that you want to select. So let's say I want to get the title of all of the books, okay? So I'm going to say select title from book, okay, and then a semicolon, okay, select title from book. So that's going to go and get all of the titles of the books, okay. I'm going to come to the top left here and click run, run, okay, and you can see it gave us the titles of our books. You see that? Cool. That's good news, Connor. Uh, let me know, anyone, if you're, if you're having trouble. Um, cool. So there's title. Okay. So it gave us the title of all the books that we have. Great stuff. So you have a book called Cheese. Sounds like a very interesting book. <laughs> um, okay. So next, let's get the authors. Okay. So we're going to say select author from book. Select author from book. So if I run that, you can see it gives me the names of all the authors. So Ham Connor and Milan Kandura. Okay. All right. But you know, usually we want to see more than just one thing at a time, right? We don't just want title or author or ID or whatever. So we can give it a list of columns separated by commas. So for example, if I want the title and the author, I could say title comma, author, okay, the names of the columns I want, from book, so select title, comma, author, from book, hit run, you have an author called cheese as well, <laughs> that's going to get confusing, but you can see it gives you the name of the column at the top anyway, so you'll be able to tell if it's showing you the author or the, or the book title, okay, so you see now we get the title and the author columns, okay guys, 
so that's nice. Um, if we want a genre as well, we could say select title, comma, author, comma, genre, right? And you can see now it'll give me the title, the author, and the genre of all of the books. Okay. And if we wanted the whole table, all of the columns, we could say select ID, comma, title, comma, author, comma, genre from book. And you can see it now gives me the entire table. Um, ooh, uh, it said ID. Okay, whoops, that's supposed to be a comma. Okay, ID, comma, title, comma, author, comma, genre. And there we go. You have a genre called cheese as well. I think maybe go for some more unique data. I mean, cheese is great and all, but... <laughs> Okay, so cool. So you see that gave us the whole table. Now, you can see that this was quite a lot of typing. So you see we specified ID, title, author, genre. That's a lot, right? Instead of typing all of that, if you just want to select everything, instead of typing all of that, you can just use an asterisk, so the star. It should be on your eight key, so you can just push shift eight, and you can get an asterisk there. And so that's like saying select all from book. That's how we say asterisks, we say all. Okay, so select all from book. And you can see if I run that, it just goes ahead and selects the whole table, exactly like if we typed all of the, all of the column names. Okay, so you can just say select star from book. You see that. Okay, so that's the SQL select statement basically, uh, not too bad. Cool. So star just means all. You guys must remember that. Okay. And you can also just specify columns if you want. Cool. So, but we, we don't only want to select data. Sometimes we want to change it, right? Update it, right? We have some old data that we need to update to new data. And so how we change data that is in a table is we say update, update. So we can say update the name of the table we want to update. And we can set column one's value, column two's value, et cetera. So I think let's just try it. I think you can agree these SQL statements, they're kind of fun. They're pretty easy to uh, remember and stuff. So let's just keep going. Okay, so um, let's update our table. So I'm going to say we're going to update the title of our books. We felt inspired. So we're going to update our book column to be cheese. Okay, uh, uh, my library was inspired by Connor's library. Um, we're going to make everything cheese. Okay, so how we do this. Um, so I'm going to leave the select statements over here, because obviously, if I just have the update statements, it'll go and update the table, but I wouldn't be able to see the results. Okay, so I'm going to keep the select statements so that I still see the results after the update runs. But before the select statements, I'm going to update um, the title column to cheese. Okay, so I'm going to say, update book set column i'm going to say title so update table name so update book set title equals cheese is what i'm going to say okay so let's just go do it so i'm going to say update book set title equals cheese okay update book set title equals cheese Great idea, Saham. That's a good pun. Um, okay, so now you can see that the title of every single one of my books is Cheese. <laughs> yeah, very creative. And if I wanted to update multiple columns, <clears throat> you can imagine that um, uh, we can call it Swiss Cheese, actually. Let's go Swiss Cheese. Okay, so. I've updated the title. We can also say, um, if we want to update more than just that column, we could also update author. So we can, just like when in the select statement, we could say select title, comma, author, comma, genre. In the update statement, we can say update book set title equals whatever, comma, author equals Switzerland. Okay, I, I don't actually know how to spell Switzerland. I think that's correct. Is it? Um, I'll, I'll just stick with it. Okay, cool. So now when I run it, you can see that every single book is Swiss cheese and the author is always Switzerland. Okay, I think it actually has an S somewhere else. I don't know, doesn't matter. 
Oh, really? Is it even open? Didn't know it was open, to be honest. All right, okay, cool. Okay, so there we go. We've got title, author. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think you can move everything. Um, great stuff. So we just update. Now you guys can notice, what's the weird thing? What is update doing currently? There's something wrong, right? What is update doing? Guys, can someone tell me what's wrong with this? Like if I had a database of 100,000 books, what would be wrong with this update statement? I mean, other than the title being Swiss cheese and the author being Switzerland, that's obvious. But I'm, I'm saying like, what's wrong with what it's doing in our table? What's like not useful about this update statement? And even our select statement. You see, when I ran select, it's a little bit weird, right? Like if you had a large dot, exactly, Ria, that's what I was looking for. Uh, that too, kind of, we would have to type up. It updates everything. Yeah, exactly. That's the basic idea. The point is it's doing too much, right? It updated everything. It updated everything. And also the select statement selected everything. So if you had a large database, like with 100,000 books, this wouldn't be particularly useful. You don't want to update every single book in the database. You don't want to select every single book in the database. You want to be able to be more specific, right? Like I want to be able to select a book with a particular ID, for example. Or I want to be able to update a book with a particular ID, something like that. Or update all the books of a particular genre or update all of the books by a particular author. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to exclude and include certain values. Okay, we're going to say value one. Well, if we wanted to update ID one, then we could, uh, but we can use, yeah, yeah, exactly. We could specify the ID or the title or the author or the genre. The point is we want to exclude certain um, rows from our query, right? We don't want to do everything at once, basically. So. Yeah, that's the main thing. Both our select statement and our update statement, as we have them now, don't seem very useful, right? They're not very useful. We don't want to work on the whole table at once. And so what we can do, you can see this is what our statements look like now. We have select columns from whatever table, update whatever table set, okay? What we can add to these is the word where, okay? Where. So you can say select, columns, so select whatever columns from book where a certain condition is satisfied. Now you'll know the conditions, we'll work with some now, I'll show you guys some examples, don't worry about it. Um, but we'll, the conditions you will see are actually very similar to conditions that we've already seen in C sharp. Okay, so um, if the if some of the if statement conditions were uh, freaking you out, then you'll be able to uh, figure them out now. Okay. So cool, where condition, so where certain thing is true, where a certain thing is true. Okay, so let's try that out, okay? Let's try that out. Okay, what I'm gonna say is I just want to, so I'm gonna go back to our normal select statement. I'm gonna say select star from book, okay? Select star from book. I um, mean, you can see it gives me the whole original table. Okay, so there we go. We've got our original table, the original book titles, the original author. Okay, select star from book. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to exclude certain books. Okay, so let's start by just saying I only want to see the books. Uh, I only want to see book three. Okay, you can pick whatever ID you want. Let's say I only want to see book three for now. So we can say select star from book where, where, and you can see the name of the column that holds the three. So the primary key of our table, the part that uniquely identifies each row is ID. So we're going to say select star from book where ID equals three. Okay. Select star from book where ID equals three. Fairly easy to understand. I'm going to run that. And you can see it gives me book three, the unbearable lightness of being, Milan Kandura fiction. Okay. So that's what the where statements allows us to do. It allows us to ex exclude those rows, make our statements more specific. Okay. 
And there's no reason we obviously the ID uniquely identifies each row, but it might be possible that we want to do something to all of the horror books in our um, in our book table, right? For example, maybe horror books need to be removed from the kids version of the table, for example, let's say. So then we could we would want to find all the books that have the genre horror, right? All the books that have the horror genre. So for example, we could say select star from book where genre equals horror. Okay, where genre equals horror. You can see if I run that, it just gives me the great book um, by Saha. Okay, because why? Because its genre is horror. Okay, that's the only horror book that we have. Okay, so cool. That's working. And you guys can see there, there will, we'll see later, we could also select by author or by title. Um, and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You could select whatever you want as long as you, you just type what you want at the end there. Okay. And there are lots of other conditions, which we'll see now, now, like on the next slide. Um, but just before we take a break, uh, okay, let's try the update statements as well. So I'm going to go ahead and update. Um, uh, I'm going to update the, ah, you can see, okay. I'm going to update the title of the great book. So book one to make it so that the T and the G are capitalized. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say updates. Okay. So update book set title equals the great book where id equals one okay like so and then i say select star from book because i want to see the result so i'm going to run that and you can see the great book now has a capital t and a capital g okay so update book set title the great book where id equals one okay so you can see we can now exclude certain rows by using this where statement um, and we're going to take a little break now and when we come back, we'll see another, another statement where this is useful, another uh, SQL statement where this where is useful. Um, and yeah, cool. We're making pretty good time. I think let's come back at 15.55. <clears throat> if you have any questions, good time to post them. While we're gone, I'm just going to add... <clears throat> good question, Yuvia. So schema is the design of the SQL database. Um, actually, let me give you guys a more formal definition. So schema is a cognitive framework, a concept that helps into schemas can be useful because they allow us to take shortcuts. Huh. Not the greatest definition, I'm going to say. I think that's the psychological definition, but we're not really here for psychology. So uh, let's say computer science, Okay, schema computer science. A schema is the organization or structure of a database. Okay, so you can see it this way, Yuvia. On the left, we're defining the structure, the design of our database, and you can see that. And on the right, we are working with the database. We're querying it. So that's like we're asking questions of the database. Okay, so on the left, under the schema, we provide the design and the organization of our database. And on the right, we ask questions of it. We use it. Okay, does that make sense, Yvian? Because you can imagine, even if you were working on a real world database, you would design it and then you would use it, right? Like those are separate processes. And obviously you can update the table using a query as we can see here, right? Um, but the basic structure is not gonna be altered by queries. The design of the database will not be altered. So is the query for like updates, modifications. Yeah, updates, modifications, and queries. So we can be like, by the way, does this exist in the database, right? We can use select statements to find certain things. Um, so yeah, that sort of thing, when you're actually using it. Mm. Precisely, I think you got the idea. Cool. So what I'm going to do while we're on break, um, don't worry, I will post in the in the group as well, or not in the group, in the Zoom chat. Um, I'm just going to add uh, two more books to our database, okay, uh, just so that we, we have the books. So I'm just going to say insert into book values, and I'm going to add two more books to the database. I'm not sure which books yet, 
Metamorphosis is a nice book. Actually, no, let's go with some other ones. The Trial by Franz Kafka. Okay, we need some more. Uh, what would this be? Fiction, I guess. We need some books that have the same genre. <laughs> um, okay, and then I'm going to say insert into book values. And I'm going to add Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Okay, something like that. And we'll say this is Lewis Carroll. Okay. Uh, I think, oh, it needs a genre as well. Fantasy. Okay. <coughs> okay. How to always get an A plus. <coughs> Who wrote this book? Einstein. Uvia. Okay, cool. And we'll call it educational. Cool. So I'm going to copy paste all of these. So these are the new books that I added, guys. This is just the full list of books that I have. <coughs> Learning the alphabet by Saham. Sa Saham already has a book in our database. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, let me just run it to make sure I didn't spell anything wrong. Ah, I spelled something wrong. Uh, let's see, what did I do wrong here? Uvia Educational. You have an error in your check the manual. Oh, I left out a semicolon. There we go. Okay. I'll copy it into the chat again. There you go. I just left out a semicolon. <laughs> okay. Cool. So now we have five books in our database. I think that's enough to work with. <coughs> and yeah, we've got a pretty good selection there. Um, looks like a lot of nice books. And we'll, yeah, we'll use those to try out some other SQL conditions. Hmm. All right.
Okay, guys, let's get going again. <clears throat> so, next thing, um, ooh, you guys remember, what command do we use to delete? Let's say I wanted to delete the table book. What is the full command I would write, guys? Full command in the chat to wake us up after the break. How would I delete the table book? Drop book, close, close. Yeetus deletus, less close. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so we say drop table, table name, okay? But the big points, so you remembered drop and that's good. So yeah, drop is how we delete tables. But I did tell you that word delete does exist. Um, and you can say delete from book, okay? Delete from book. Um, and what this will do, so drop deletes the entire table, so drops the table. Delete, delete specific rows in tables, okay? So for example, um, let's go ahead and delete the trial, okay? So book four. So you can see it's very important that we use the where here, the word where. So if I say delete, from book, okay? Delete from book. Now, what do you guys think that's gonna do? What do you think that'll do? Anyone? What's that gonna do? Delete from book. Will that do what I want? Delete from book. Knowing how the, um, knowing how the, yeah, knowing how the select statements and the update statements work, what will this do? What will this do, guys? Knowing how the other two statements we've seen work, select. You think it'll do nothing. Does the select statements and update statement do nothing when you don't specify? What, what do you think this will do? Knowing how the select and update statement work. Anyone? What do we think this will do? Exactly. Yes, Riyadh will delete everything. Okay, and you can see that that's not very useful. 
So I, I'll run this and you can see it just deletes the entire, everything in the table. It doesn't delete the table, okay? Drop would delete the table. This just deletes everything in the table, okay? So it doesn't delete the table itself. It just deletes everything in the table. So obviously we wanna use a where clause. So we're gonna say where ID equals one, okay? Or wait, we wanted to delete book four. So where ID equals four. So now when I run it, um, you can see that it just deletes book four. So we have one, two, three, and five, but it deletes the trial by Franz Kafka, okay? So yeah, you must remember to use the where clause. It's very important, um, important. I don't know what happens to my accent there. It's very important um, to, to use where, or then everything just works on the whole table, okay, by default, okay? Which would not be very useful, I think you can agree. So it's important that we use the word where, okay, where. All right, so that's the delete statement. Those are the three main statements that we use when working with tables. Um, and the where one, the where is important because that allows you to um, exclude certain rows uh, from being operated on. Okay. All right, so let's discuss more about how we provide those conditions to the where statements. So you guys have only seen one condition so far, right? I've only used equals. So I've said where ID equals one or four or five or whatever. I've also said where genre equals something. Okay, we've, we've used the equals one a lot. Okay, so equals says, is the column's value equal to the thing on the right? Okay, but as with C-sharp, there are a lot of different ways we can define conditions. Okay, so the first sort of seven or six, sorry, the first six that I have listed here are pretty obvious, actually. Like the first six are, um, are the same as the ones that we've seen in C-sharp. Uh, this last one's a little bit, it looks different, but it does the same thing. So let's experiment a little bit with the first um, six. And yeah, we'll try that out. So we're going to say select star from book. And let's just go through a few of the options that the where statements allows us to do. So select star from book where, okay, guys, let's say I want to select all the books that have an ID less than five. What do you think I'm gonna type here after this where? After the word where, what am I gonna type? From what you know from C-sharp and what you could see in the SQL table there. Yeah, I want the full statement, you the other full condition, just so that you guys can, I make sure you know. Okay, exactly, we can say ID less than five. But yeah, you got the correct operator, you so I'll give it to you too. Okay, so you can see that now gives me one, two, three, four. The other way I could have done this, I could have also said where ID is less than or equal to four, right? Where ID is less than or equal to four. Okay, and you can see that gives me one, two, three, four. We can also flip it around. We can say we only want where ID is greater than two, for example. Um, so guys, when I run this, which rows will it give me? Uh, you can just tell me the IDs. What books am I gonna get? What books am I gonna get from saying ID greater than two? Which books am I gonna get? just to make sure we're awake because we did just come back from a break. So just specify the IDs of the rows that will be left. I'm just gonna sing to myself until someone does it. Three, four, and five, nice, yes, okay. There we go, three, four, five. Okay, easy peasy. Um, Cool, now I'll give you a, I'm gonna give you a more challenging one, okay? So let's say, hmm, let me look at these. So what do we know about this? Okay, you know what, I'll make it super challenging. I'm gonna say where ID So you can see I've got the less than and then a greater than sign, okay? So where ID is, so what this means, I'll tell you this much. This inside SQL, so the less than and then the greater than sign is the same as exclamation point equals inside C sharp. Okay, does anyone know which books will be left? Which books am I gonna get out of this? It's like not, 
Nice, Saham, exactly. Yeah, so it's not equal to, okay? So this is saying where ID is not equal to two. So we get one, three, four, and five, right? Because those are all the IDs that are not equal to two. So let's try one maybe a little bit more interesting. I'm going to say where genre is not equal to fiction. Okay. So which books am I going to get now, guys? You can see on the table on the left, which books am I going to get? Nice. That's correct, Saham. Yeah. We're going to get one, two, and five. Why are we getting one, two, and five? Because those are the three books that do not have the genre of fiction. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So these first state, so these first six are the same as the C sharp ones. Uh, I suggest actually, if you want to practice how to use um, all of these different conditionals, uh, this is a good, uh, SQL is a good place to practice those conditions. Okay. But we've also got these four other words, which are a little bit more interesting. Okay, they're a little bit more interesting. So the first one I'll show you is pretty easy to understand. It's between, between, okay, between. So we can say select star from book where ID between, okay, where ID between two, and three okay now i'm pretty sure you can all understand what that means right where id between two and three right it makes sense there's one little extra question of is this inclusive or exclusive right is that including two and three or excluding two and three so let's just go ahead and run it so where id between two and three um and you can see it gives us okay let's get do a more interesting range okay Let's say where ID between two and four. Okay. So you can see it is including. So it says two, three, four. Okay. Two, three, four. So it includes the two edges. Okay. Um, and that gives us two and four. Because those are all the books that have an ID between two and four. Right. You can see that. We can also um, use the word not. So you can see in the on this list here, we have the word not. Okay, so I'm going to show you that now. So we can say where ID not between two and four. So what am I going to get out now, guys? Which books after I run this will I get? Where ID not between two and four. What will that give me? A little bit. One in five, precisely, yeah. Saham Ria, correct, yeah. Well, there isn't a six. I assume that's a typo, though. Yeah, nice. It seems you all got it. Okay, cool. So we see we've got one in five there. Okay, so the word not also works. And by the way, you can use the word not with any condition. Okay, um, like we could also say uh, where uh, not ID equals two, I think should probably work. Let's just check it. Obviously, there's a better way to do this, but you can see that does work. So it's the same as saying, um, so saying where not ID equals two is the same way as saying ID not equals to two, okay? But the point is you can use the word not to negate any condition, okay? Any condition can be negated with the word not. Okay, so that's between, that's not. There's two other interesting ones. So I'm gonna start by showing you the one, the, the word in, okay, in. So if you wanna say, um, let's say we wanna select all the books that are either horror or biography, okay? All the books that are either horror or biography. Okay. Um, actually, there's no reason why. Okay, we'll say biography or educational. Okay, that's a more realistic example. Okay. Um, so we're gonna say select star from book where genre in. Okay, we can use the word in, and you can give it a list of possibilities. So I can say where genre in um, what did we say? Educational or uh, biography. Okay, so select star from book where genre in educational or biography. Okay, and you can see that gives us the epic tales of Connor because it's biography and how to get an, how to always get an A plus because it's educational. Okay, so that's like saying 
either, where genre is either educational or biography, okay? So we use in to mean or, basically, if that makes sense. Hopefully you guys get that. All right, so that's how we, we use in. And now we can also, the last one that I wanna show you guys, the last condition that you can use is the word like, like, okay, like. A little bit more interesting, a little bit more complicated actually, um, but we'll see it now. Um, it's not too bad. <clears throat> the word like allows you to select a pattern, okay, a pattern. So that's like saying um, maybe it starts with something or it has a particular order of letters, okay? That's what like allows us to define. And it does this using something called radicals, okay? Now there are a lot of different ways you can do this. <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you two radicals that you can be asked about frequently, okay? So the two ones that I'm gonna show you are underscore and percent. Underscore and percent. Now these can get pretty advanced. We'll start basic and, and then we'll figure it out from there. So let's start by doing, let me just select the entire book quickly just so that we can think of some interesting examples that we can do. Mm, okay, a lot of our books start with the with the. Okay, so that's not a particularly particularly interesting one. And every single author has a. Okay, we have two authors whose last letter of their name is A. You guys see that? Franz Kafka and Milan Kundura. They both have an A at the end of their names. So let's try this. I want to get all the books who have authors where the last letters of their name, or names in this case, is A, okay? So how, we, how would we do that? So we can say, select star from book where author like, and then we can define a pattern, okay? Where author like. And so the two radicals that I'm gonna show you, the first one is percentage, okay? <clears throat> percentage means anywhere, okay? Or anything of any length anything of any length, all right? So if I say percent sign A, what this means is that the pattern it's defining is we can have any string of any length, that's what the percentage means, with the last letter being A. That's what that pattern defines, okay? Percent sign A means that any string of any length as long as it ends in A. So we're gonna run this. And you can see we get Milan Kundura and Franz Kafka. Why? Because you can see there's a string here of any arbitrary length, in that case, Milan Kundura, and then we have the letter A. And we've got Franz Kafka, and then we've got A, okay, Kafka. So see that guys, N's and A's. Not too bad, right? So that's what the percentage sign does. Uh, we could also use another one, right? We could say, uh, let's find all authors who have an O in their name, okay? An O must be somewhere in their name. So what do we expect to get? We would expect to get Connor and Saham, right? Because Milan Kundura doesn't have an O, uh, Franz Kafka doesn't have an O, and Yuvia doesn't have an O. So let's select all authors that have an O in their name. How we, how we would do that is we would say <coughs> the pattern is a string of any length, Okay, so percent, the letter O, and then a string of any length. Okay, so this means you have an O somewhere in your name. Okay, so we can say run, and you can see we get Saham and Connor. Okay, not too bad. So that's what the percentage sign does. It just means <coughs> uh, you can replace it with anything. Okay, you can replace the percentage sign with anything. Okay. That's not the only pattern we define. We can get pretty advanced. So let's say I want to find authors where the, hmm, hmm. let's think of this. Uh, okay, none of our authors have very correspondent names. Um, okay, you know what? I'm gonna say how to get an always, how to always get an A plus. We're gonna change the author to Ria, okay? Because that's cool. So now we can say, I want to find all authors 
where the second letter of their name is I, specifically the second letter. It doesn't matter if you have an I somewhere else in your name, or that means we sh probably should have kept Uvia around because Uvia is a useful counterexample. Okay, so I'm gonna say, let's say Ria wrote the trial. Okay, it's no longer written by Franz Kafka. Okay, cool. So we're looking for an author where the second letter of their name is an I, okay? Because we can see that um, Uvia has an I, but it's the fourth letter. Ria has an I and it's the second letter and Milan has an I and it's the second letter, okay? So we're specifically looking for the second letter. How we can represent that pattern is with an underscore. So an underscore means that the, you can replace it with any single character, okay? Any one character, okay? Then an I, and then a percentage sign to mean you can replace it with anything, okay? So hopefully you guys understand that pattern. That means any letter can be the first letter, then it must be an I, and then it can be anything after that, okay? We don't care what comes after that. It can be anything of any length. So you can see when I run this, we get Milan Kundura and Ria. Okay, because the second letter is I. You can see here it's an M, then an I, and then anything of any length. Here's an R, and then an I, and then anything of any length, okay? If we wanted specifically a three letter name where the second letter is I, we could also say underscore I underscore, and now we'll only get Ria because you can see Milan Kundura actually has lots after the name, whereas this is just being replaced by a single character, okay. So you guys can see we can get pretty advanced with the patterns. We could also say we want the third letter to be N, okay. That would be like underscore, underscore. The third letter must be N and then anything can come after. Now we'll get Connor, all right, Let's see. So yeah. You can define a whole bunch of patterns like that. Those are the only ones that you guys really need to know, the underscore and the percentage sign. So meaning one character or any sequence of characters. Okay, cool. So that's like, and that's all the conditions that we have, guys. Now, there's one last thing that I want to show you for today. It's not too bad. Um, although I will say this is the most difficult part of SQL. I don't like this. I didn't like this bit when I was at school because I don't think it was explained to me very well. Um, hopefully I do a better job with you guys. You guys know that we have the definition of a database is an interrelated, right? Um, a collection of interrelated to data. So we've got one table here, but in, in the real world, you're not really going to have one table of data. You don't just have books. There's also publishers and genres and um, authors and a whole bunch of other interested parties, right? Customers, all of this kind of stuff. There's not just a book. So how we can alter this a little bit is what we're going to do. We're going to put genre in a separate table, okay? Exactly like we did when making the table 3 and F at the end of last week's lecture. I can just remind you guys of that quickly uh, by showing you the slide. Um, so what we're going to do is create two tables and they're going to relate to each other, right? So let me show you quick. Da, 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 da. Load up. Come on. Wow, Google Slides is a bit slow. Okay. Oh, very good. Oh, no. Damn. There you go. Cool. So I'm going to skip to the end quick. Okay. So you can see here we have our book table. This looks a lot like ours, uh, except we author also have authors. <coughs> and what we're going to do. We're going to create this, this relation here, where instead of specifying the whole genre here, we just specify an ID, and the genres point to another table with a particular genre. Okay, so you can see two means fiction in this case, and one means poetry. Again, forgive the drawing, I'm using my trackpad. Okay, so there we go. We're just going to create this structure quickly, and uh, uh, just so that you guys can see that this can be done in SQL. So firstly, we need to create the genre table, okay? It's just gonna have an ID and a genre and the genre name, okay? So we're gonna say create table genre, create table genre, not too bad. Um, and we're gonna have an ID, okay, for each genre to uniquely identify each genre. It's gonna be int and not null. 
And each genre is also going to have a name. So it's going to be name varchar255. And we're going to say this also can't be null. So I'm going to say not null as well. Okay. Then I'm going to say the primary key of this table is ID. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. So that created our genre table. And now instead of specifying genre here, we can just specify genre ID. Okay. Genre ID, which is going to be an int. Because genre ID is going to reference a genre in the genre table instead. Okay. So cool. But you can see that currently they're not related, right? Genre ID is supposed to reference an ID in the genre table. So how do we relate them? <clears throat> we call genre ID a foreign key, okay? Because genre ID is referencing the primary key of another table. So it's like a foreign, a foreign key, right? It's, it's in our table, but it represents the primary key of another table. It's a foreign key, okay? So genre ID, each genre ID specifies an ID inside genre. Makes sense. So we call it a foreign key and it, and it makes quite a bit of sense. So we will say foreign key is genre, I, is genre ID. And then we just need to tell it which key, which, what it references. It references another column in another table, right? So let's see what the example looks like here. So I'm gonna tell the book table that genre ID is a foreign key. So I'm gonna say foreign key genre id okay and then i'm going to say this this foreign key so this column genre id references okay what does it reference it references the genre table so references genre and what column in the genre table does it reference it references id references genre id okay like so Cool. So we've told it that genre ID, each genre ID is pointing to an ID in the genre table. Okay. And now you can see we'll, we'll make this work now. So what I'm going to do is just add some data to the genre table. So I'm going to say insert into genre values. And we're going to have the first genre is horror. So we're going to have horror. We're going to have, um, I'm going to change. Hmm. Okay, we're going to make Saham's book fiction instead. Okay, like that. Uh, just so that we have less genres to add. So we're going to say fiction. There we go. Instead of horror. I guess it's maybe similar in a way. I actually, Saham did say it was nonfiction. But anyway. Okay, so we'll say two. Uh, so then we need biography biography and then we want educational okay so those are the three genres we have in our table okay oh and it must be one two three okay now instead of saying fiction i can just say the id of fiction is one okay instead of saying biography the id of biography is two okay uh, instead of saying fiction that id is one Instead of saying fiction over here, that ID is one. And instead of saying educational, that ID is three. Okay, like so. All right, I'll post the full thing in chat. I don't think horror and nonfiction. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Horror and fiction are a pretty good match though, yeah. General, I actually, I mean, the real world can be scary sometimes. Maybe it's like a book about like a serial killer or something, I don't know. Okay. Cool, but hopefully you guys get what we've done here. Now, instead of saying um, fiction directly here, we just reference the entry in the genre table, right? Instead of saying biography over here, we just reference the entry for biography in the genre table. Okay, so let's see how this works. Okay, so we've referenced these two tables. So what if I try to select from both of them? I'm gonna say, okay, select star from book comma genre. So select everything from both of our tables. And I'm going to run that. Now, you can see that this is not going to work nicely. Oh, OK, hold on. We, we must just, uh, let me just see. Cannot add foreign key. 
I think I spelled something wrong somewhere, guys. Uh, bear with me here. Gonna have to uh, look through this a little bit. Um, hmm. Okay, genre there is spelled correctly. Genre there is spelled correctly. ID is spelled correctly. Uh, insert into genre values. Hmm. Test.genre doesn't exist. What are you talking about? I create table genre, don't I? Create table genre. Hmm. I'm a bit confused. Did I spell it wrong there? No. Okay, hold on. Let's just take this more slowly. Um, hmm. Aaron, no, no such table test up book. No such table book doesn't exist. Yeesh. Outline three. Oh, I, did I do something wrong on this line? Primary key. What? Do you want a comma there or something? That's silly. Name. Oh, Verchar. I spelled it wrong. There we go. I spelled Verchar wrong. Wow, that caused a lot of issues. Okay. There you go. I just spelled Verchar wrong. And you can see now everything works. It's still not working though. So this is breaking in the way that I intended. Previously, it was breaking in a surprising way. Um, Cool, but we're gonna say select star from book comma genre. So we're gonna select everything from both of our tables, okay? And you can see what this does is it doesn't know how to relate the two tables, okay? So it relates every single row of the one table to every single row of the other table. So you can see we've got the great book by Saham three times, once for fiction, once for biography, once for educational, because it doesn't know how to relate the two tables yet. You can see we've got the epic tales of Connor also three times, once for fiction, once for biography, once for educational, because it doesn't know how to relate the tables. So in order to select everything from both tables, we need to tell it to join the two tables together. And this is the last thing that we'll cover for today. So we need to tell it how to join the two tables together. And we use the term inner join. So how are we joining these two tables together? And it becomes a pretty long statement but I'll go through it slowly and hopefully it'll make sense for you guys. I know it looks freaky, but it is actually pretty simple. So we've got these two tables, we've got book and we've got genre, okay? And genre ID inside book must match ID inside genre, right? So if the genre ID of your book is two, that means that the genre of your book is going to be biography, why? because the ID of two inside the genre table points to biography, okay? So what we need to do is tell the, tell SQL that the book and genre must be joined. So we're gonna say, select star from book, inner join genre. So this is just saying, we are joining the tables book and genre, okay? Where are we joining them? So we need to tell it what we are joining on. Which columns are we joining on? Which columns must it match together? Okay, so we're gonna say on, okay, book dot genre ID must equal genre dot ID. Okay, so the genre ID in the book table must be the same as the ID in the genre table. Okay, and now you can see when I run this, it'll join the two tables properly. You can see we've got the great book, and it's joined on genre ID. So you can see genre ID matches the ID in the genre table. So it's fiction, okay? We've got the Epic Tales of Connor by Connor. The genre ID is two. The ID is in the genre table is two. And you can see it's biography, okay? So you can see it now knows how to match up the two tables. So it can join them together. And now this whole statement, this whole statement over here, book in a join genre on book.genre ID equals genre.id. That whole statement is just one table. We can just treat it like one big table. You see how we've joined the tables together over here? It's as if they were one table all along, okay? Because we told SQL how to join them together. So you can see I can still use a where statement. I can say where genre.name equals fiction, for example. And it will work on this whole big table we have at the bottom here. This whole big table we have at the bottom here, it'll still work as if this was one big table. So you guys will still be able to tell me, hopefully, which books will I get out of this, guys? Which books give me the book IDs that I'll get out of this? 
which books am I going to get out of this long statement here? So you can see I just added where genre.name equals fiction. And it will work with this whole big table exactly. So you guys can still read it, you see. So when I run it, Rio, you are correct. We get one, three, four, because the genre name is fiction. So it manages to join the tables together into one big table because of this inner join. So we say, okay, we're selecting from book, but we're joining book to genre, and we're joining on the genre ID column in book and the ID column in genre. Okay, so you have to tell it which columns we're joining on. Okay, cool. So that is that, guys. That's all I want to show you about SQL. Um, there is one more thing, because you can see that this is a very long select statement, right? Like if I wanted to select all the fiction books, I would type that out. And then if after that, I wanted to select all of the, um, if we wanted to select all of the uh, educational books, then we would have to write out the whole statement again, and we just change fiction to educational, right? You can see those are very long queries, right? They're very long. So how do we make that a little bit easier? Can we just maybe make it so that we only have to change that one thing? And it turns out you can, we'll see that in the next lecture. So rather than typing out this whole long query, we can save a query onto the database itself and then just use the saved query, okay? Um, so we'll see that next week, uh, but for now we are done. We are done, okay. Um, that is it for today. So yeah, thank you guys for coming. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, and for all of you watching on YouTube, if you have any questions, you can ask on WhatsApp, but please make an effort to attend next week as well, since that will be our last lecture, actually, our last lecture in which we learn new content. Um, but yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers, Rio. Cheers, Jatin. Cheers, Connor. Cheers, Yuvia. Um, yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, and yeah, see you guys all next week. Cheers, cheers.